one last example problem to talk about um, uh, for determining the uh, deflection. Uh, and the maximum bending stress right, within the plate. So, in this case, we have a a rod that goes through um, an annular plate. So, what this looks like, I guess, in three dimensions is that we have our plate. Through that middle of the plate, we have our rod connects through our plate all right and then our plate is around the plate is is supported or it's completely fixed all right so I'm gonna call the rest of this plate it's totally fixed um all right and it says that the the shaft is visually attached to the plate um so um so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna determine the deflection of the applied force and the maximum bending stress. So in order to do this, what we need to go back and look at is we essentially need to figure out what cases of this problem are within or that we have available to us um, we can use to recreate the case that's given to us in our problem. So So if we go here, all right, so we have this five kilonewton load that's being applied directly to the center of our shaft. This shaft has a radius of 10 millimeters. Okay. Um, and it has a, the radius of the disc is 50 millimeters. So <clears throat> if we look and we isolate just the shaft, so we just look at this interface here. Okay. Um, that <clears throat> interface here um, is going to have to be supported by um, because it is fixed, I guess, at this point, I should say, is that because it's fixed at the boundary, we're going to have a shear force okay, and we're going to have a, um, a bending moment. So <clears throat> our shear force that will have to, um, I guess, that will have to be applied at this point uh, here um, is going to balance out that our, our force. So we're going to say that V in this case is given to us as 5 kilonewtons. All right. And what we're going to do here is... I know it, you would think that this, the V here, here would be, each would be 2.5 kilonewtons. But the thing you have to remember here is that we're looking at this at, like, I guess, like a purely radial problem. So what we're really doing is we're like kind of splitting this into two parts. We're only considering it from like the, the I guess, the inner radius out. So we really are just going to say that, like, we're really going to treat just the one side of the problem. So we're going to, Ignore this side here. We're just going to look at this side going this way. So what we'll have is V2 is going to be equal to V, and that'll be equal to 5 kilonewtons. And our moment here, you can pretend this is sort of like a little cantilever beam, would be equal to V of 5 kilonewtons times um, 10 millimeters, right? Right? All right. And then what we have to then do is our moments in all these problems are going to be moments per unit length. So we had to divide 
this by the length of the inner radius or the inner circumference of that rod. So the rod is going to be equal to the pi, the, the length or the circumference is just equal to pi times d or 2 pi times the radius, and the radius was 10 millimeters. Okay. These will cancel out here. Um, <clears throat> but, um, and you know, which is 5 kilonewtons over 2 pi. Um, all right. Um, and then, <clears throat> so then what we will have is we have a case of, We have a, now that we know the forces at this point, the equal equal and opposite forces would be applied at the, um, inner surface here. So we have our V, I guess our V2, we have our five kilonewton force, but we also have our moment that we have to apply. As well, so it's going to go. This was going clockwise. This was going. This should be going the. This should be going the other way. Sorry. So this should be going. Um, this should be going this way. Yeah. So. <clears throat> so what we can then. So, this is our. <clears throat> Uh, this is our case here now for just the plate. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look back and see if we can find um, any of the two cases that would, or any case within the table that would solve for this type of problem where we have a fixed, uh, our back, we have an annulus in the middle, and we have a f we have a force and a moment being applied, and the boundary conditions are fixed. So. If we go back here, all right, so this is an annular plate, simply supported, nope. Okay, so K7 has a annular plate simply supported with a shear force per unit length. All right, so, um, so that's not too bad. Um, And then K6, K6 has um, a moment being applied on the inner radius of an annulus, but it also has, in addition to the, the simple supports at the ends, it has moments being applied at the, at the edges as well. So those, the simple support plus the externally applied moment would be, could be treated as a fixed boundary condition since the fixed boundary condition has can have a mo can apply a moment and a um, a simple support. So we're going to combine cases six and case seven in order to evaluate um, our deflection of our um, of our our two cases here. So um, so let's see here. So we're going to treat this as being equal to K6 and the K7. So K6 had uh, yeah, an annulus. It was simply supported with two mo with a moment. And then K7 had just an annular plate with just the shear forces being applied.
So we can combine these two cases to then approximate our um, solution. So what we need to do here is if you go back to the tables, um, for K6 and K7, um, we need to know what M1 is, and we need to know what M2 is, um, and we know the dimensions A and B. Um, so we can calculate um, um, the displacement using this equation if we know M1, M2, and A and B, and then uh, we can calculate M of R and M of theta to calculate our two stresses. Um, and then we can do the same thing um, for K7. We just need to know what V1 is. The one thing is that a lot of these problems, um, you notice is that V1 is the shear force per unit length applied. And, um, sorry about that. All right. And then the moment here are the moments are per unit length. So <clears throat> you need to make sure that your values in these these moments and these shear forces are per unit length of the plates. Otherwise, your answers will not be correct. So um, so if you do that. Um, so what we can do is we can solve for M1 and we can solve for M2, or we have M1, I should say already. We can solve for M2 and then we can solve for, um, <clears throat> so for M1, um, or, so if we look at our plate, we have M1 and we have V, being applied, sorry, V, and we have M1 being applied to our plate. And on the edge of the plate, so we're only going to look at half of the plate again, um, we have um, M2 being applied, right? So M, <coughs> so M, um, um, Okay, yeah, so M, um, M1 we calculated earlier that was equal to um, uh, 300 meters divided by 2 pi times 0 0.01 meter. And then for V, um, we had to, I guess if we sum the moment, it's about the edge here. Um, we'd have to multiply V times 40 millimeters. And I'm sorry, this should be just 15 newton meters. So this is M1 in at just a moment plus the shear force times the length here, which is 40 millimeters. All right, so that would be our total moment at 0.2. Then we had to divide by the the total circumference of 0.2 or at the edges. So we'd have to take, multiply this by two pi times 0 0.05. This would be our value for M2. Our value for M1 would be equal to um, 50 newton meters divided by two pi times 0 0.01. Um, and then our value for V in, in this case here would be V, V was equal to five kilonewtons, but we need to do per unit length. So we need to divide by two pi times the radius of 0 0.01 meters to give us our V1. So we plugged in all of those, we plugged in those terms for, uh, for V1, and we plugged in the other dimensions and the material constants for our plates. We could solve for the displacement as a function of R for both the cases. Um, and we can solve for M of R and M of theta. Um, and then we could solve for the uh, maximum uh, uh, 
Um, <clears throat> we get solved for the. I'm not sure this one had it. This one did not have it. Um, but this for this case, it was it was convenient. They gave you. Um, they gave you some um, tables that you could look and find where the max where the maximum location would be, um, and then where the maximum moment would be. So that was kind. But for the other, um, so but what do you, in short, what you can do is you can add your moment equations together. Right, and then you can add your deflection equation together to get the total deflection for both cases. Right. <clears throat> so, all right. So that that's the end of the lecture here on on bending within thin plates for both rectangle rectangular and uh, circular plates, these are good, these methods that we just elaborated here are good ways to start initial design work on plate systems that you know have known loads or node pressures um, being applied to them. Um, and it'll give you a ballpark estimate of whether you're, the plates that you're selecting are thick enough or supportive enough to be able to withstand the pressures that they're undergoing due to externally applied force. So I see that I have one more question here. So usually you say, what is DWDR? DWDR is the slope of the section. So the slope as a function of the, right? The, the W is the displacement in the, in, in the Z direction. Um, and R is the radius. So that's going to be, give you your slope of that deflection as a function of R.